Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to have a look at creating a bookshop database. So first of all, I'm on the create page and I'm going to select blank database and create a database called bookshop. Like so, no spaces. And it's going in documents, but I'll leave it in documents for now. So as soon as you create a database, you are presented with a table and ready for you to start typing um, your data in. But I don't want to do it like this. So I'm just going to close that one down and that table will disappear. So what now I can do is I can create my own table and design my own, own structure. I could have done that in design on that one as well, but let's just go through it from scratch. So create table design. So if I clicked on that option, you just get back to the same screen. And what I meant bef was before, if I go into table table design view or click on design there, I get to the same place, but you've got to do all this other stuff, save the table and all that. So it's a bit of a waste of time, I think. So I'm going to go create table design straight away. Now it's um, presenting you with the field name, the data type and a description of the data type. So first is going to be book ID so that's going to be a unique identifier I'm going to have that as the primary field so book ID could be the um, actual number of the book publication and that is going to be text because it's got letters in it or you could just have a number it's up to you you can create whatever you want but uh, I'm going to leave this as as default short text so I can put numbers in there and letters now if I give it a description so this is going to be unique identifier and then you've got title and um, author cost of the book, quantity in stock, and date published. Let's have that one. While you're designing this, I mean, you can come back and add extra, extra fields to this list if you want. It's totally up to you. Now, let's have a look at these data types. Title is going to be um, text, author is going to be text, cost, that's going to be currency, quantity is going to be a number, and date published is going to be date time. So these are all the different data types. Now, down the bottom you've got properties for each of these data types and we're on the date published, that should be. So on the date published, I want to put an input mask. Let's click onto this line. And uh, you get these three ellipses at the end. Click on that. It'll ask me to save the table. Yeah. So this is going to be TBL book books. That'll do. TBL is the indicator for tables. There's no primary key. I'm going to say no, because I'm going to do my own. And then it comes up with this input mask. And the type of date format I want is this one. And if you click down the bottom there, you can see that you're going to get these little markers. So you can't actually put the word August, for example, in there. That'll do. Finish that. Now, the primary key I said was going to be the ID field. So I'll click on primary key for that. So you get a little key symbol. That means you can't have a duplicate book ID. I don't need that anywhere else and in terms of formatting you can leave these all on short text and these two are on currency and number now each of these have these properties at the bottom there so you can see the size of a short text field so you can only have up to 255 characters in there so that's probably going to cover that title of a book i can't see any book being longer than that 
maybe a funny book might have that. You just have to watch out for that. Uh, you could come back in here and change that. But what you can do, access allocates 255 spaces, whether you type 255 spaces or not. So the author, for example, you could probably drop that down to max of 50 and do the same for each of these other ones. Title of the book, probably leave that a bit longer, but not 250 characters, 255. And we've already looked at the input mask. You've got default values. So default value for a number field, for example, is zero. You've got validation rule and validation text. So what you can put there is it must be greater than zero. Um, and then the text would say something like, make sure it is a positive number, just in case somebody did a, a typo and hit minus. If I go back onto a text field, you get a, bit, a few more properties. So you've got this one here, required and zero length. If you put required to yes, it means that you would not be able to get off that record unless you actually had that information. So if you didn't have the date published, for example, or, or the author, you would have to type some sort of um, text in there, like it says there, allow zero length, yes. You'd have to put something in there um, which wasn't relevant to move on. So best is to leave that to no until you are absolutely certain. An example where it would be yes is if some you was working for the um, government and you needed somebody's national insurance number and you can't process a claim unless you had it so that would stop it moving on stop you moving on you'd put that to no as well so they wouldn't be able to get off the record so it'd have to stop and they'd have to come back or ring back in every every field can be indexed that's set to no by default if you set them all to yes it's it's more efficient when you do a search and these things are uh, basically for foreign language um, if you've got different foreign languages like japanese and things like that and then you've got alignment at the bottom. So each each of these you can edit and change the properties. What you should do is anything that is not obvious, which all these are, you should put some description on this right hand side so people know what it's about. Ten years time coming to design of a table, understand what these fields are all about and why you've done you've done certain things with them. So that's all I want to do on this table so I'm ready to save the table and then we can have a look at the table and you're ready to input your data so book ID I'm just going to use a simple a number and the title of the book is going to be the door which is a book I wrote I am the author cost eight pound and let's say you've got 21 in stock and date published was the um, 01-01-2008. Okay, so that's how that would work. And then you move down onto the next record. Now, what I want to do here is, so I've got 21 of these books in stock. I want to work out how much that value of that stock is. So if I go back into design so I'm going to do another field called stock value and I want this to be a calculated field so calculated is an option so calculated field and once you click off that you get this little box coming up expression builder so we've got the fields here so it's going to be cost double click on cost times quantity click OK to that then it comes up with that information down the bottom there format this needs to be in currency so the properties go to currency and then if we have a look we'll have to save the table first have a look so there's a stock value there if you change that to 10 quantity 10 there you go it's doing the right calculation now i'm just going to go back into design to change that v to a capital just so it looks nice and even save that and you're back into adding record number two i'm going to put another a, a number one this should stop me doing this because that's a 
unique, unique identifier. Now it's going to let me put all the information in, so I'm not even going to bother typing anything because I know what's going to happen. As soon as I come down onto a new record, it's telling me that I can't do that because I will create a duplicate. Okay, so that's why you put that as a primary key to stop that happening. So I'm now going to call this the cycle, capital C, and I'm the author. Uh, this is £10 and there's five copies and this is published on the 21st of August to 2021 and you can see straight away it's come up with a stock value like so. Now what you have on this on the ribbon is you've got this totals feature where you can click that and you get an extra line there. So quantity so I could sum all the quantities, I've got 15, and then stock value, sum that, and it gives you this information in the table view. Now, as we develop this database, you'll see that you can do all this sort of thing in reports and on forms, and obviously and on tables. The main area that you would do calculations though would be in queries. But this is a cool little feature, I like that. Save this. And let's close this down. So all we've done so far is we've created a new table. Uh, we went into design, structured the field name and the data type, did a couple of properties, and then we've added two records like so. And you've got the totals. So that's just the first bit. The next bit, we'll have a look at creating a sales table and then linking these two tables together so you can start pulling information from one to the other. But for now, that's all I want to talk about in this particular database. So hopefully that has been of use to you and I'll see you in the next one.